Well, back working on the car, working on the uh, cooling system. These cars have always had a problem with overheating just because of water getting into, I'm sorry, air getting into the system. Because it's quite complex. You've got two radiators. you got one here on the left, one on the right. They both have electric fans and shrouds. But what I've done is made up a new system of one and a half inch tubing and welded in a couple of bungs and put in uh, some bleeder. These are quarter inch hose lines. And here's an area here that would normally collect air. And I used to have a bleeder in there and I would manually bleed the system there. And of course manually bleed the system right here. And everything of course passes through the filler neck right here. Which is where you fill the whole system, engine block, radiators and everything. But again there was always a problem with air in the system and you'd have to vacuum it out and then you'd have overheating and then you'd lose some. And so hopefully uh, the system that I've worked out will work. So you've got a very high point right here which air would be trapped. You have a point here where air will be trapped. So what I'm doing is bleeding that air up this temporary line into this area and it will bleed both of them simultaneously out and over and right up to the filler cap which is the basically a miniature expansion tank so my goal is to once this thing that fills up it should fill and force all the air out of the system I'm using clear vinyl so I can watch the air come out and of course the water enter the system and go over and completely level out within this whole cooling system situation with uh, no air whatsoever. So here's the line that will ultimately be used. I've already ran it and ran it underneath the panel right here. It comes out right here. Of course I still have to cut it to length and it will be attached here with some clamps. But I want to use this uh, vinyl clear hose just to see for myself that this is going to work out. So let's give it a try. Looks like it's starting to work. You can see the air being forced out right here. And I saw a little purge come here. So that water is finding its way. It's probably filled this side up first already. And it's already working its way up through here. So now I see it coming back. So it's kind of purging over here right now. There it goes. All right, it looks like I've got an air pocket happening somehow. As you can see, this is full, or half full. It's going down really slow. So I'm assuming this radiator here is full, and I'm just getting a, I'm getting a lock happening over here someplace, and it's probably because this water cannot flow into the engine block which is this is the way it would travel and there's a thermostat in there that's closed right now because the motor's cold so I have a feeling that this, this is just getting backed up and I have a vapor lock happening in the engine right now so there's probably air in the engine and I cannot get that out with that thermostat in place this may or may not be draining down there might be a chance I have a hole in that thermostat about eighth inch and it's slowly going past that so I'll try just to continue to fill it up and see if it uh, see if it'll take any more it may take a little while but we'll see what happens That filled it up all the way, but it's 
ever so slowly going down it backed into this line just a little bit because it filled all the way to the top and it's kind of just sitting there so I think the problem is because of there's a thermostat in the in the car so I may have to remove that or at least remove it and drill a hole in it maybe or just wait on it. It looks like it is going down which means it's it's filling the block well just filling it up wasn't working I still uh, I'm sure I have some sort of an air pocket someplace and I'm thinking it's in the engine block someplace so what I fell back on is just doing the standard style system vacuuming and what this is hook to the air compressor right now it's pulling about seven pounds of vacuum so it'll basically vacuum all the air or put the system in a vacuum bring all the air to the top and after I get up to it says 23 inches which looks like it's going to take a while a vacuum I will uh, disconnect this line and connect this line put it in a bucket of water open up this valve and hopefully it'll pull the water in and displace the air with water so we'll see what happens just got to wait on this thing to pump up slow but sure I'm almost up to 10, so it's moving really slowly. I know it's working. If you look at this hose right here, you can see it's collapsing from the vacuum. So that's a telltale sign right there. Everything else is hard line, so you're not going to be able to tell. It's some pretty tough vinyl hose. That should be pulling the vacuum in there too. But that tells me right there that that baby's working. So we'll just wait on it. Well, it's been almost an hour, and it's still vacuuming down. I've got about 16, 16 pounds of vacuum right now, and I'm heading, I need 23. So, I, it's still climbing, and you can really tell that it's pulling a vacuum big time now, because this hose is completely smashed totally together. So luckily that's the only hose, but it's kind of nice to know that um, it's really pulling hard. So I guess it's just going to take a while. We'll see. Hopefully another half an hour. It should be at 23. Well, it's been two hours, and the best I could get is 15 inches. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot here. That's the best it's going to do. I've disconnected the compressed air and switched over just to the tube running into my water and now that we've drawn a vacuum in the system I can open it up and pull water in there she goes you can see the vacuum coming down as the water's going in not pulling a whole lot in my level in the bucket only went down about an inch inch and a half and I'm back at zero so well some fluid went in I guess some air came out so we'll just uh, vacuum it down a little bit more and see what happens So it could be just burping inside there. And pulling that air out little by little. You can see it purging right here. So we'll see what happens. I'll go ahead and look at that. It's already dropped to three. And there it goes back up. You can see that fluid moving. So maybe this is uh, towards the end of purging the system out. Who knows? This is burping itself in there. Who knows what's going on inside that engine? 
Well, the vacuuming down of the system, it never made it to 23 pounds, uh, made it just over 15 or so, and the second time around, didn't even climb over 7 to 10, so I'm not sure what's going on, but the water level's full, and it's staying there, so there may still be some air in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and start the motor up, and I know that the thermostat will open up, so I'll just let it get up to about 180 degrees and wait for that to uh, open up and then see what happens and see if it purges itself or if I can go ahead and top it off. I'm still anxious to see what happens with these lines. You can see there's a little fluid in there. So once this thing gets up to pressure, it's going to be interesting to see if that ultimately burps itself and it gets all that air out. So let's push it outside and fire it up. thermostat is open when this radiator which is still cold and this tube right here but right now there's no flow I can't feel any heat here no heat here yet but it'll open really quickly and that will get hot really quick well what's interesting uh, the thermostat I'm sorry the temperature is stuck on about 140 which I've never seen before in this car But uh, maybe the new system is working out a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and I'm running almost 2,000 RPM at high speed idle, so I'm going to kick it down here. Let it idle. And see if she'll warm up. It looks like I've got a little hole in my pipe there, so I'm going to shut it off. It looks like the temperature is starting to climb. Woo! <laughs> yeah, the, the vinyl hoses didn't seem to to want to hold up, so that was a bad idea. But I do see fluid coming in there, so I'm going to relieve the pressure here. Oh, that was interesting. I didn't have any clamps on those. Didn't really expect it to get it this hot, but looks like it just decided it wants to... Thermostat wanted to open up real quickly. Yeah, that's nice and hot. That radiator is nice and hot, so. Anyway, we averted disaster there. Got it shut off. So, it looks like that vinyl, it might work, but I'm going to have to, I can tell right now, it's warm and it's softened. So, that's what's happening. I'll have to put some clamps on it. So, my bad. Alright, well, I got rid of all those, that clear uh, vinyl line. That was a good idea but turned out to be a bad idea so I went ahead and put on my uh, heavy duty quarter inch hose of course it's running underneath here and comes up here and connects so the engine is nice and warm uh, radiators are just warm so I think the thermostats open 
I noticed that the level of fluid is down. Of course, I lost a little when that line popped off. So I'm going to go ahead and top it off and I'll restart it and see what happens. Taking a lot of fluid, so that's nice. So that, hopefully that tells me that thermostat is opening and it's going right into the block. All right, it's full. Temperature gauge is straight up and down. I don't want it to get over 200. It likes to run between 180 and 200, so hopefully it's going to stay cool. We'll see. We'll let it warm up. Yeah, we're starting to get a little pressure up here. I can see the flow. Let me go ahead and put the cap back on and let it build up some pressure. Well, here we are sitting at about 200 to 210 degrees. The car has been running for about a half an hour. Everything look, is looking pretty good. I went ahead and put my hard lines in, or my heavier duty lines, if you will. Put clamps on them. Got all that buttoned up. This hose here developed a, ho a hole in it. So I've replaced that with a new one. Replenished the overflow bottle here. So far, so good. It started up and uh, at about 220, 210 degrees, the automatic cooling fans came on. What's interesting is just the temperatures that I'm getting. 166 degrees right here at the expansion. And even the engine block is showing 143 degrees, which is plenty cool. That radiator is 111. That radiator is 113, so I'm definitely not overheating. So the truth would be, uh, you know, we're sitting here and what, 105 degrees in the driveway. It's probably like 95 out right now, so it's definitely hot. So hopefully, just going down the road, I'll actually get more air flowing into the inlets here. Which, of course, the fans will be running and help pump it through. So maybe going down the road, it's going to cool off even more. So at least now I know sitting in traffic, it's more than likely not going to overheat. I'm not running any antifreeze in it right now, except for what residual may have already been in there. But I put nothing but water, then I added this super coolant. It's supposed to lower the temperatures uh, up to 25 degrees. So I found out that antifreeze isn't the best coolant. Water is better than antifreeze, so in my climate, I don't have to worry about anything freezing. So I'm just going to run water and, and this stuff. See how it comes out. So after it cools, I'll check all the levels, 
make sure all the air is getting out of it. So I'm real happy with it. And uh, we'll keep moving on. Well, just to give you an example, an illustration how these, how well these fans work. I got them turned on right now, of course. You can see the, how hard they're blowing, big time. And they're all part of this uh, box system here. This is a low pressure area. You can see the fans forcing the air in. Of course, going down the road, the whole car acts as a little uh, slipstream. So again, hopefully uh, going down the road is going to force more air in there and keep the thing a lot cooler. We'll see. We'll give it a test sometime. Thanks.